This is ABC 15 Mornings. Well, the decision is in. The FDA approving vaccines for children, but shots, they are not going into arms just yet. What still needs to happen first? An active threat near our nation's capital. What we know so far on the measures police are taking to keep everyone there safe. And it's homecoming weekend. We're going to take a look at the festivities at ASU and what Coach Herm Edwards is saying before the big game. And we give you a live view this morning at one area of the ASU campus. This is the Polytechnic campus out there. The light's still up because the sun isn't quite up, but you just start to see the silhouette of the mountains on the horizon there. Nice and cool this morning, too. And we say good morning to you as we kick off this Halloween weekend. So glad you're starting it off with us. I'm Nohe Lani Graham. And I'm Mark Thompson. Of course, everybody planning for uh, either uh, big events tonight or perhaps uh, tomorrow night. So, of course, you're going to want to know uh, what the weather is uh, got in store for us this weekend. You know what? It's going to be great. It's not going to be as hot as we ended this past week. It was a little warm for some people. We did make it into the 90s. Today, it'll still be warm, but not quite as much. 62 degrees right now at Phoenix Sky Harbor. Light breezes around five miles an hour. We've got crystal clear skies, so if you want to get up and get out the door and get some exercise in, it's a nice time to do it. Here's that Halloween weekend forecast, so it's pretty great. 87 today, so less hot as I mentioned. Still a little warm. Tomorrow, mid 80s, 86 degrees, a few clouds in and out. It's going to be a gorgeous day and perfect for trick or treating up in the high country. 64 today and then definitely cooler for your Halloween. 59 degrees is definitely going to be feeling more like fall. So make sure that the kiddos are bundled up up there because they're going to need it. If you want to go for a hike, though, first thing this morning, great time to do it. Sunrise is at 635, so you've still got a half hour to get up the mountain and then you can watch that sun come up and we're going to linger in the the 60s for quite a while. Going to take us until 10 o'clock to make our way into the 70s. It is going to be a little breezy across the high country, so I'll talk more about that. Plus, I'll give you a preview of that Halloween forecast coming up in that full, most accurate forecast. First up this morning, a man waking up in jail accused of a violent sexual assault that happened at ASU near the ASU basketball arena. 30 year old Eric Bell arrested in his Mesa home on Friday. And while the victim didn't have ties to ASU, students we spoke with still visibly shaken up about what happened, especially now that it's getting dark earlier in the evening. Some even saying that they have come to expect incidents like this. I see so much going on, it's like so shocking, but then it's almost not surprising. That sounds awful, but it's like you, you can see how, like, to know, it's just a lot going on here. It is awful that anybody would have to have that mindset. The violent attack happened October 17th. Police say Bell pressed what the victim thought was a gun to her back, forcing her to a nearby parking garage. A middle school student in the valley stabbed by a classmate Friday. This happened at Mojave Middle School. This is near Pima and McDowell, and this is in Scottsdale. Police telling us that the teens got into an argument when a girl pulled out a knife, stabbing a boy. We spoke with the boy's mother last night. She says that her son stayed in the hospital overnight. Doctors monitoring some of his uh, conditions, including internal bleeding. It's unclear what led up to all of that violence. This morning, police in Washington, D.C. are on high alert in response to a threat from ISIS. Right now, we don't know much about that threat specifically, but we do know there is an increased police presence at shopping malls in Northern Virginia, just outside of D.C. This is a non-specific threat. They clearly are going to have to use the blanket approach to all the logical places where somebody could launch an attack or or some sort of violent event at, at, at a mall or shopping center. And authorities in the D.C. area say there will be an increased presence through the rest of the weekend. And we're learning new details in the investigation in that fatal film set shooting that took place in New Mexico. For the first time, we're hearing from the gun supervisor on set, Hannah Gutierrez. Uh, she was one of the last people to handle that gun before it was given to Alec Baldwin. Her lawyer just releasing a statement saying that she has been falsely portrayed and that she has no idea where that live round came from that was in the gun. The statement says that she pushed for more gun training with the staff and extra time to maintain the weapons, but was denied by production. She ended working 
two separate jobs in order to work on this particular movie. A key grip who worked with Gutierrez Reed on a previous film saying that the real problem here is production companies overworking people behind the scenes. This young mother, this DP, was killed on a movie set because of money. And that's really what it boils down to. And that's the sad part about this. Police say that a live round ended up in a gun that was being used as a prop cinematographer. Helena Hutchins was shot and killed. Charges have not been ruled out in this case. Now to the latest with the coronavirus. Millions of American children between the ages of 5 and 11 just days away likely from being able to get their very first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. And it is news that is welcomed by many parents, but others, they are apprehensive. ABC's Karina Mitchell has details. 28 million American children are now one step closer to getting increased protection against COVID-19. The FDA granting emergency use authorization for Pfizer's COVID shot for children ages 5 to 11. To me, the, the, the rationale here is protect your children so that they can get back towards uh, normal life. The first 15 million doses now being shipped, so they're ready to go into arms possibly as early as Wednesday after an expected sign-off from the CDC. Some parents are looking forward to getting their children vaccinated. Leslie Lopez pulled her son out of school before he started first grade worried about COVID. I just want my child to be able to do that so I can really rest <laughs> and feel more at peace of mind. So yeah, definitely is something we're very excited about. But some parents aren't so sure. It just seems like it's so, it come out so fast and it, we're talking about a child. It, it, I feel like it's different for me. Meanwhile, New York City is bracing for a possible worker shortage as thousands of municipal employees defied a Friday deadline to get vaccinated. New York City is going to come to a crisis on Monday morning. Response times are going to go through the roof. Firefighters facing off with city leaders, the mayor insisting the mandates are working, tweeting that vaccination rates among city workers are on the rise, and the U.S. Supreme Court denying a request to block Maine's vaccine mandate for health care workers, which doesn't permit any religious exemptions. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. On that note, we are now learning Arizona's largest children's hospital doesn't have plans to open up vaccinations for all children. Phoenix Children's Hospital tells us the vaccine will be open to established patients at just four of their 12 pediatric locations, and they won't start taking appointments until November 15th. Also, better to do more at one site than a few at a you know, smaller location because you can dedicate people to it. You can have the storage. Maricopa County says there are 103 providers on its vaccine distribution list. The state will update the vaccine finder map with pediatric locations once the go ahead is given. Well, of course, it is Halloween weekend, and there are so many ways that you can celebrate across the valley with your family, starting in downtown Mesa. They're going to have trick-or-treating on Main Street from 11 until 3 today. There's also a kid's corner with arts and crafts and a photo station. And then at 5, the Spirit Stroll and Beer Garden kicks off for the adults, featuring specialty drinks from downtown Mesa breweries. There'll be live music, a costume contest, raffles, and a haunted Mesa walking tour so you can learn a little bit about the spooky history and the best part all of those events in Mesa are free for the details head to downtownmesa.com a good way to stretch those costumes for the kiddos too because you know they want to wear them non-stop right now and are you looking for a Halloween bash for tonight talking stick resort they are hosting a wicked ball this year's theme shipwrecked mm -hmm. there will be a ten thousand dollar costume contest yeah it must be a casino uh, live entertainment there and dancing that party is tonight from 9 p.m. until 2 a.m. Definitely an adult party. Tickets <laughs> start at 50 bucks. Visit uh, TalkingStickResort.com for more information. For 10 grand, you know the bar is going to be high for that costume. Yeah. So even though it's shipwrecked, you can't show up as just any old pirate. You know, <laughs> yeah, but you really better have like yeah. next level costumes. Yeah, put something into it. That is for sure for that one. Well, happening today, it is homecoming at ASU and celebrations. They're kicking off in just a few hours. Right now, we have a live look at Old Main Lawn where people are getting ready for a block 
party that is happening today. And you can see if you look really closely, the tents are already up for the activities. Both the block party and homecoming parade start at nine o'clock this morning. But ASU's oldest homecoming tradition happened late last night. The Lantern Walk each year has been going on since 1917. Amazing. Students, they have carried lanterns to the top of that A mountain that you can see when you drive through there in Tempe. This is uh, homecoming royalty as well. That's where they crown the, uh, I guess they have a king and queen mm -hmm. of homecoming. Just like any Just like other. And the lanterns school. you're looking at, it's that path that's winding right up a mountain there. That's all lanterns. That's how we see oh, that. that all is lit up. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good pointing that out there though. Yeah, pretty neat. And this weekend's a biggest event Always the homecoming game, of course. Itself, yeah. The Sun Devils are taking on Washington State at noon. It is the team's first day game of this season. And this is an important one, too, not just because of homecoming. The Devils are coming off a bye week, and that followed their first Pac-12 loss of the season. But they are still in contention for a conference title right now. Coach Herm Edwards says, though, if that's going to happen, they need to get back the momentum that they lost. So they do a lot of good things, uh, and uh, this is a game that obviously both teams need. Uh, you got to keep winning in the Pac-12 because when you're running out of time, you start running out of games. And we know we have five games left, and this is an important game for us as well as for them. So fingers crossed that Wazoo Cougs it like they often do. <laughs> the Sun Devils are 16-point favorites in this one, though, so it's you know not out of the realm of possibilities that they will win. Will Farrell is trending this morning, still ahead, why he says he didn't want to be a part of an Elf sequel. Plus, Valley representation at the UN Climate Change Conference. We've got details for you and uh, our mayor going uh, to attend that summit as well. That's next. Also a live look this morning at the I-10 split and still ahead at 630. We're going to take a look at the closures that you need to know about as you start your Saturday and head out on the roads. We're back with more in just minutes. Stay with us, Arizona. Welcome back, everybody. Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego is in Glasgow, Scotland this weekend. She's taking part in the UN Climate Change Conference, the summit bringing together world leaders to talk about this issue. Gallego sharing her goals with ABC 15 before she left. Sometimes there are inaccurate stereotypes that we don't take our status as a desert city seriously. Part of my job as mayor is to tell the world community about our commitment to sustainability and the where areas where we're leading from solar to innovative technology that cool our streets. And Mayor Gallego talking about the cool pavement project just last week. The project moved into its next phase. The new asphalt coats with high reflective values to cool down the roads. It's the largest project of its kind in the entire nation. To learn more, head to abc15.com slash impact earth. And it really makes sense for Mayor Gallego to go there. I know they got a lot of world leaders, yeah. but Phoenix, when it comes to climate, uh, we are really at the center of it, especially for the desert climate here in the United States. And keeping that pavement cool as more people move here, it's going to be huge. Absolutely, because it is getting hotter here. Our air quality is worsening because more people are moving here. So we do have uh, high stakes in the climate change game. As for the views this morning, they're pretty great. This is a live view of Tempe. This is the Mill Avenue Bridge right here. Uh, we've got a mountain in the background there and just a gorgeous color this morning. Doesn't this just scream Halloween weekend for you this morning? It's nice and comfortable out there as well. We've We've got clear skies statewide. We'll continue to have clear skies through the afternoon and then early this evening. Some clouds will stream in and then mostly in the overnight hours. We'll have a cloudy forecast, but we'll have more clearing tomorrow. Temperatures right now because it is cooler continue to drop this morning into the low 50s across much of the valley. We're at 53 degrees in Chandler down to 51 in Maricopa. It's 55 in Levine, but we're in the 60s in the northern and far eastern corners of the valley in Anthem, Fountain Hills, Apache Junction, Santan Valley. 
Valley sitting at 57 degrees. Great morning if you want to get out for a bike ride. That sun doesn't officially rise until 645 this morning. By 10 o'clock, we're in the mid 70s, so still great weather. And then by 2 o'clock, we're going to be in the mid 80s and getting closer to our peak heat of the day. So it is going to be a little warmer this afternoon compared to yesterday. Also, we've been talking about ASU's homecoming game. Kickoff is at noon. So if you're heading to the events early this morning, you saw the temps will be in the 60s by 11 upper 70s right as you're getting ready to tailgate and then at noon at kickoff we're at 81 degrees by the time you get out of the game it's going to be in the mid 80s a reminder though the sun does really shine into the bowl there so you will feel a little warmer so short sleeves definitely in order and put your sunscreen on forecast high for today in tempe is 87 we'll also see that temperature in scottsdale deer valley neighborhoods peoria and surprise a little warmer than that in buckeye goodyear and levine topping out at 88 it'll be 89 in maricopa apache junction in the mid 80s and Fountain Hills will be as well across the state this morning. Flagstaff has now dipped into the 20s, 29 degrees there. It is freezing. Same temperature at the Grand Canyon. We're in the 40s in Sholo this morning. Prescott has dropped into the upper 30s this morning. Out to our west, we're in the 50s and 60s and upper 50s to our south. But we will warm into the upper 80s today in areas like Tucson and Casa Grande, low 80s in Safford and Globe. Out west, we'll be in the 90s from Yuma and through areas of the lower Colorado River Valley. Central portion of the state, perfect temperatures, mid to upper 70s today. And north of the rim, we're working our way into the 60s. 64 is that forecast high in Flagstaff. You'll also notice the breezes picking up around 10 to 15 miles an hour north of the rim starting at noon, peaking around 2 o'clock. You could see gusts at times up to 20 miles an hour, so be mindful of that. A little warmer, a little Less warm, I should say, for Halloween here in the Valley. 86 tomorrow and continuing to trend down through Tuesday. And as you kick off Halloween morning, we'll be back into the 60s by noon tomorrow. We'll be at 81 degrees and then by 5 o'clock, 84 degrees. I'm going to have a look at that evening trick-or-treat forecast and the rest of the seven day because we are going to be cooling down quite a bit compared to this time yesterday. So I'll talk about that a little later this morning, Mark. All right, now a look at what is trending this morning, starting with Will Farrow, who just revealed that he turned down a $29 million offer, $29 million offer to star in Elf, the sequel. I read that twice on purpose, prompter operator, just because that number staggering. It must be great to be able to turn something like that down. Although the first film is one of the most successful Christmas movies of all time, Farrell said that he thought the sequel was going to bomb and he couldn't have honestly promoted it. Well, if he was in it, it couldn't be a bomb, right? Mm -hmm. Well, a pretty great addition to another big day. Tom Hanks crashed a wedding in California. Good. The newlyweds, they were celebrating on the beach when they noticed him walking behind their photo shoots. Like, um, who is this guy walking in our photos? And the crowd is like, that's Tom Hanks. And I'm like, what? No way. Right. And he took off his hat and started talking, and immediately we knew it was Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks has such an amazing personality, accepted us for who we are, showed us love like we were family, um, stuck around and took pictures with our guests. Um, it was it was great. Out on the beach still looking for Wilson? Was that the... <laughs> Yes, the ball's the name, ball. yeah, that's who he's looking for. <laughs> well, it turns out Hanks, he is something of a wedding crashing professional. He did the same thing back in 2016. I would definitely invite him along. I'm not mad at it Yeah, at all. exactly. Come take some pictures, make that day <laughs> memorable. All right, well, from uh, grocery prices to shortages, recent supply chain issues having an impact on all of us in one way or another still ahead. And five things that you need to know how a new policy could help. Also, we are looking ahead to some fun, spooky events all weekend long, but we've also got to make sure that we help keep our kids safe. So we've got some tips and tricks ahead of all of those treats. Thanks for watching ABC 15 Arizona, streaming 24 seven on Roku and these streaming devices. Safety, that really is priority number one when it comes to Halloween. Last year during the pandemic, it was health safety. A lot of families took a hiatus from trick-or-treating. This year, 
more people do plan on taking their kiddos out. And so we've got to focus on road safety. So to help us do that is personal injury attorney, Mark Lambert from Benmore. Thanks so much for joining me, Mark. It's good to be here. And I'm glad we're able to talk about this subject. It's an important one. It is. So first, let's talk about some stunning statistics from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration when it comes to accidents on Halloween specifically. Yeah, it's kind of um, morbid stuff to talk about, but your viewers need to know. Uh, It is the number one deadliest day of the year for child pedestrians. And what people may not appreciate is that the danger is so much more significant. So with kids who are four to eight years old, the, the, the risk of getting into an accident and being killed is 10 times higher than any other day of the year. So let's make sure that people know what they're doing when it comes to safety. It boils down to two categories. So let's start with parents, practical things that you can do to protect the kiddos. I first, talk about with your children before you go out and trick or treat, how dangerous of a day it is and why. Make sure you know what your route's going to be. Make sure you discuss safety procedures. And I think even for parents to speak to their teenage kids who are going to be driving on Halloween, because you've got a lot of drivers who are going to parties and with parties, you know, there's alcohol and other things. That's a, that's a problem too. So it's having that conversation well ahead of time. You mentioned costumes. That's another thing we can do. So many costumes are dark. You, yeah, I'm Darth Vader, which is Batman. You, I mean, you can go through the list. And, and, and so to tell people to, that their kids should only wear light outfits, I, I, that would be ideal, but that ain't gonna happen. So what can you do, given that a lot of people are gonna be in dark costumes? You wanna be wearing reflective tape. You wanna have flashlights, glow sticks. You wanna be lit up. Again, assume that a driver on the roadway is not going to see you. So what are you going to do as a parent? What are you gonna do as a trick-or-treater to make yourself more visible? That is so important. And it's really so easy and it won't take away from their costume. In fact, the kids will love the extra lights. Now this is a two-way street. So you have a message also for the people who are behind the wheel. 50% of the fatal car crashes on Halloween involve alcohol. So we know people are going out, they're partying, they're celebrating the holiday and they're drinking and driving or they're using drugs and driving. We have drive sharing available. So you have Uber, you have Lyft, you have taxis, you have so many other ways of doing it. So that's one of the most important things. And, 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 and two, as a personal injury lawyer, I get so many calls from folks where the injury was because someone was looking down at a cell phone. And if you're looking down at a cell phone, if you have a, a child that does something unexpected, which guess what, that's what they do, you're not gonna be prepared for it. Be prepared for that, be proactive, be a defensive driver. Best way, or even if they have proactive questions, how to get in touch. Yeah, I mean, they can always reach out to me, and I'm Mark Lambert at at Fenimore.com. We absolutely want to make sure that everybody makes it home safely so that they can all count their candies and trade them like you're supposed to do at the end of the night on Halloween. Mark, thanks so much for the guidance. It is a really important topic. Thank you.